Let's make it a good day. Today on The Jason Show, Kelly Ripa opens up in a new tell-all, including details on her complicated relationship with Regis. Then, Miss Shannon and photographer Eric hit the streets to ask parents, What's the most annoying thing about your kids? Oh, gosh. And my latest best thing ever. This one is dust and smudge free. The Jason Show starts right now. Here we go. Let's make it a good day. Sister, it's Kendall Mark, everybody. Hi. How you doing? Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, what? blue. Oh, we have a new, yeah. Ooh. We got a couple new things. I know it's blue. Ooh, so it's exciting. very, very exciting. I love it. It matches new, your eyes. I know. Thank, no, I don't have blue no, eyes. No, they're like bluey greeny. <laughs> they're hard to tell from your bluey greeny eyes. Are hard to tell the difference when you're. Look real close. Oh, yeah, no, they're green. They're green, they're, yeah. They're the, they're the color of your top. Hey, look at that. A little lighter, though. That's a very, like, army green. I love me an army green. Yeah, you look good. No, but, yeah, they're green. My dad, my yes. mom has beautiful blue eyes, and then my the my papa had uh, green eyes. So, yeah, papa. Papa. I don't know. Papa, that's why I call That's why I call executive producer Jeff. Papa. Papa. Papa, yeah. how you doing? I'm doing great. I love a good Tuesday. You are. You're in a really good mood. Thanks. I'm getting my hair done after the show. <laughs> oh, is that why? What you getting a cut or what are you doing? Well, um, Lexi will be like, we need to cut your hair. But like all women, I'm like, no, I wish my hair was down to my ankles and it doesn't grow. So I say no. I'm just getting it colored. Do you know my all-time favorite? Uh, woman haircut, woman haircut. <laughs> woman haircut. I didn't mean to say it like that. That was very aggressive. Like you know haircuts? my favorite woman haircut? No, my favorite hairstyle is a uh -huh. good old fashioned bob. I love it. And you a have, bob. here's a great, uh, here's a compliment. Mm -hmm. You have a great, Leo, can we take a close up of Kendall for heaven's sake? There we go. Hello. Kendall has, you have a great jawline. Why, thank you. You do, you look at, yeah, you have, that you could do a, and the audience agrees. Thank you. It's yeah. all those chin exercises I was telling you about. I know. Can I tell you, your mom <laughs> has me obsessed with the chin exercises. I'm telling you, it works. Just keep it all. She does, what does she do? She slaps like. You got to do this. And then there's this like. <laughs> like which is so attractive. I just, I asked you that so we could get that close up Thank from you. Thank you. I, um, I set you up there. Thank you. Uh, so I'm glad that you're in a good mood. I'm yes. a little frazzled today. Tell me more. Because today is the start. You know, I do this show, and then my other job is the radio show over there on My Talk. And we have, yeah, My Talk 1071. And uh, we do a big pro we do a big charity event every year. If you watch the show, this show, you still know we call it. It's called Project Down and Dirty, where every year they the bosses ask us to step out of our comfort zone. Uh, one year we joined the military. We were at Camp Ripley. That went well. Uh, one year we did a musical in three days. Aaron Schwa was part of that. We ran a restaurant. We did construction. And this year it's Film Fest. In three, four days, we got to write, edit, star in everything, a movie that, huh? will be, that will be shown on the big screen on Friday at a screening. So yeah, that's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Uh -huh. So let me tell you now, Leo, Ted, do we have the little, if you want tickets, you can buy tickets. It's all for right there. It's mytalk1071.com. It's for charity. Uh, our show's working for the Twin Cities Film Fest to help young filmmakers uh, uh, get a start. You know, uh, the Twin Cities Film Fest does a lot for young filmmakers. But so luckily my executive producer who's been on this show, Dawn McLean, you guys know Dawn, the paranormal investigator. She's also my house sitter. I love her. She watches uh, my oh. dogs. Yeah. She told me once that my house was my house was haunted. That was rude of her. I know. She said that there are <laughs> there there's spirits in my house. Didn't need to know that. But no. anyway, that's a story for a different day. Um, but she wrote the script. She's a screenwriter. What does she not do? I know Dawn does everything, but she wrote this script. I can't tell you anything about it. But I will tell you one thing. Yes. My co-host Alexis, 
her appearance, <laughs> her appearance, oh, I don't have my phone. I would show you just to get your reaction. Mm -hmm. Her appearance is so outlandish that the audience, they're gonna laugh for about a minute uh, <laughs> because of how ridiculous Alexis looks, my oh, co-host. You've piqued my interest. Yeah, we have real filmmakers, like local people helping us, and I'm, I'm excited. They all have to be comedy, so we, we're doing it. However, I'm just a little stressed by it all. So I'm a little, I'm a little frazzled, so mm -hmm. I'm glad that you're here and you're in a good mood to balance me out today. I'm ready to balance you. Are you ready for the hot dish? Yes. Let's get started, everybody. Rolling, Leo. <laughs> background looks nice. Thanks to Kimberly, the background looks really nice. She, mm -hmm. I'm loving it. Anyway, let's get started. It was Elvis night on Dancing with the Semi-Stars last night. And among the surprises of the night, Wayne Brady. Look at this. He did good. Mm -hmm. He did well. Mm -hmm. But as we said here, he was on Broadway, so not a huge surprise. So in the end, New Jersey housewife, here's a spoiler alert, uh, Teresa Judice right there got the boot. She had to go home. And Cheryl Lab, uh, Cheryl Lab, Cheryl Ladd, Charlie's Angel, uh, was saved. But, mm. you know, I. I Teresa, when she can't flip a table, I don't know. She's flipping over backwards. She's trying. Yeah. I this uh, I can't watch. You know why I can't watch the show? Because of Tyra. I, I just can't I get. Uh, yeah, I can't get past Tyra. But we can do this. It's time once again to play my favorite game, America's game. What was Tyra wearing uh, on Dancing with the Stars? Let's look at this here. Our video's buffering there. Video's buffering, buffering, buffering. <laughs> here we go. Okay, I'm not. I'm not quite sure Where's about that. What do you think? What do you think, Kendall? What do you think of the outfit? I think Miss Tyra is missing her pants. See, and this is the thing. Again, this is, you know, Tom, uh, Tom and Aaron, they just walked out. You know what I mean? It's just like, I, I, on a show, I'm going to say it for another time. On a show like this, the host should not be the stars. The host should compliment the people performing. And I, that's just my feeling. Thank you for the... That's true. Yeah. I, I honestly, I mean... I'm not someone who's like, oh my gosh, that's so indecent of an outfit. Like, I don't care. But that was a very, very short dress. I was going to say, I'm not a prude, and no. I, that stuff doesn't bother me. No. The, the cut, yeah. the little V, yeah. kind of like, hello, went up a little pants. high. It was like, hello, hello. next to the dish. <laughs> One of the hardest working people in daytime, uh, Kelly Ripa. Well, Sometimes. I mean, she does work like two hours a day. But anyway, <laughs> the talk show host is dropping some tea on the late, great Regis. She joined, now if you don't remember, a little history lesson. Ripa joined the show in uh, 2001 after Kathy Lee left. And she co-hosted with Reg for 10 years. Well, in Kelly's new book, she says she had a complicated relationship with Regis. Uh, it, she had good and bad days. I'm going to talk about that line in just a second. And the chapter about him, she says, was the hardest to write. She says that when she was offered the job, she was told that Regis was going to be the boss. Uh, when she showed up on set for day one, Reg made a joke, and I'll tell you what it is in a second, that made her feel horrible. Uh, so here's the joke. This is what she was offended by. Uh, she was told that when she started the show that the show, the infrastructure, didn't like people coming in with entourages. Right. You know, a second assistant and an assistant and a publicist and, and a hairstylist and a, and a dog watcher and you know what I mean? And, right. and, and, a, and, a, and a, a priest, you know what I mean? So she came in with a hairstylist and a makeup person and Reed looked at Gelman and said, Gelman! It has an entourage, and they laughed, and it was just, she took it the wrong way and right. was offended by it, and, and, and she points that out as something that didn't make her feel great on her first day. Right. The line about good days and bad days, I love that people are making a big deal of that line. Everybody has, no matter who you're working with, mm -hmm. even if you're on, not on a daytime show, you have good days and bad days with your coworkers. That's, right. not, that's, not to, that's nothing to blame Kelly about. That's nothing to blame Kelly about, and it's certainly nothing to blame Reg about. 
And, uh, you know, Reed made everyone kind of feel like he was never invited back on the show after he retired. Mm -hmm. She sets the record straight that he was. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't understand why he gave everybody that impression. And then it was wrong for people to put her in a position to answer for him. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Why did you say that, Reed? And I love Reed, but why did you say that? And now Kelly has to answer for you. That's not fair to her. And she's kind of like, I, I'll never really understand why he did that, but I can't make someone be my friend at the end of the day. Like, it seems like she has, she's at a good place about it now. Well, and also people shouldn't be surprised. I think people, when they see folks on TV, especially on ensemble, very similar to this, people, and I get it, they, you, you all want Reed and Kelly, when they get done with work, you all want them to go to Applebee's and split, you know, some ribs and, mm -hmm. you know, and Kelly said it's not how it was. That's no. not, there wasn't their relationship. No. They, had a, they had a work relationship. They saw each other off camera very few times. Mm -hmm. You and I are different. We have, we do go out socially and, right. and I mean, we, we've, we've had happy hours for the staff without you, but that was just I knew this was coming. audience, 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 oh not on purpose. But I, I just forgot this one time. I know. I forgot to come to the party. Okay, Leo, come back to me on five here. Don't listen to this. I will tell you though, we were all trying I'm to right plan. Here. We were all trying to plan a happy hour, and and I won't tell you who said it, but executive producer Jeff said, uh, <laughs> "Wouldn't it be funny if we picked a day and Kendall couldn't make it again?" And I said, <laughs> "Jeff, that's very mean, and we shouldn't do that." <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he said. <laughs> no. I actually said, let's do it. <laughs> yes, let's uh -huh. do this commercial. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> I would never do that to you. Do it. Never. <laughs>Kimmel is in Brooklyn this week. He does this every year uh, and his team visited Boston and wanted to see how deep loyalties to the Boston Red Sox, how deep they really lie. How deep do Red Sox fans, how much do they really love them? Uh, they let me, here's a clue. They love them a lot. That's our late night rewind. Any chance I could get you to throw on a New York hat? And we're gonna, we, we're, oh, we're doing- Oh, dude, you're really pushing. <laughs> I wanna be a part of that New York, New York, go Yankees! The Big Apple, more like the Big Crapple. Go Bow Sox, Bean Town, more like Little Ween Town. Go Yankees! We're Red Hot for the Red Sox. We're Yahoo for the Yankees. New York is full of rejects and rats. Go Red Sox! Boston is full of losers and lobsters. Go Yankees! F the Yankees. We f hate the Yankees. New York Yankees, they are the best, best <laughs> baseball team out there. Is that a New York accent? Or you have <laughs> I'm trying. Tried. How important is loyalty to you guys? It means everything. Yeah. <laughs> means everything. Except when there's a camera right in front of you. Always my favorite. Would you do that? I mean, but you're—I mean, you're a sports fan, but you're not a diehard like. But I still don't think I would do that because I mean, if somebody—the only thing I can think of is that, like the Packer Viking rivalry, right? Yeah. Or Badger Gopher, and they were like, "Well, you just put on this jersey and pretend you're a huge Badger fan." No. No. I and will not. I'm not even a giant sports fan, and I don't know if I would put on like a Packers or right. I wouldn't do, especially I love the Twins, so right. I wouldn't put on whatever. My parents would just like put on whatever. Would I would. Burn me. I, uh, did you notice that? I couldn't think the on jersey? the spot of another uh, a baseball uh, unit. Um, a unit? A, a, a team? team? A team? <laughs> another baseball team. Okay. Uh, the White Sox, the Cubbies. I'm from. I'm, you know, Congratulations. Those are two. I got, got two, two in there. We got Baseball unit. I'm trying, Eric. I'm trying. <laughs> Next, uh, speaking of sports, there are pers uh, there are professional sports. Are we? Can I go home? <laughs> I, I just I think I need you. to be put. I think I need to be put down. I think I just need to go <laughs> take a, a small nap. nap. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be a long week. I'm so glad you're aboard. Uh, there are. <laughs> stop it, Kendall. <laughs> Kendall, stop. You're not. You're not helping me here. Go on. I gotta host a show. <laughs> what? Aaron, now you're not helping either. <laughs> there are professional sports leagues 
eSports leagues, but how about a pro Jeopardy league? <laughs> Thank you, audience. <laughs> If the executive producer uh, of Jeopardy has his way, that could be a reality with the debut of primetime celebrity Jeopardy over the weekend. That's right. The EP says they want to expand the Jeopardy multiverse even more. He told the New, <laughs> he told the New York Times that he'd like to expand into a pro level version of the show. The Masters League would bring back the game's brightest and most successful contestants, and it could even be aired live. <laughs> my, okay. My thought, my thought is this. I think they're doing to Jeopardy what Nabisco has done to Oreos. I'm sorry? <laughs> I'm gonna need a little more than that. Do you have a fever? <laughs> <laughs> What? I'm fine, Kendall. <laughs> okay, go but on. But no, now let me explain. <laughs> there are too many damn Oreo flavors. You know oh, what I mean? Lemon, And mango, now there are too stuff. many. We have, I, <laughs> oh, the audience is not clapping at that one. <laughs> no, I just, just give me regular Oreos. I don't need Cracker Jack Oreos. I don't need, I don't need cigarette Oreos. I just need, <laughs> I just need, the kids. I need regular Oreos. Jeopardy now with Mayim and Ken. We have a celebrity Jeopardy. We have kid Jeopardy. We have mm -hmm. teenager Jeopardy. We have dumb people Jeopardy. You know what I mean? We have dumb people Jeopardy. No, I would be totally on that. <laughs> I would be. I can I tell you? Are you? You're smarter than I am. But I watch kid Jeopardy, and I don't even know the answers to those questions. Right? Are you right? smarter than a fifth grader? That show is hard. Oh. Fifth graders, I didn't learn fifth grader stuff. Uh, the questions on fifth grade are too hard. Anyway, I digress that we don't <laughs> need all of these. You're going to ruin what makes Jeopardy special. Keep Jeopardy pure and just what it is. Maybe you have the celebrity version, but that's it. We don't need four, four varieties of Jeopardy. It's too much. It's too much. Next in the dish, country music singer Mickey Guyton was on with Sherry yesterday. Hi, Sherry. And she talked about her husband and how she came up with the rather unique nickname for him. Look at this. I heard that you have a, a you, you call him by a nickname, Spleen. What, you call, what is Spleen about, girl? Listen, okay, in the age of social media, don't you know you see all those posts where people are like in these happy relationships and they yes. send this like long caption that not everybody needs to see. Yes. And so I was being sarcastic about it and I was like, oh, you are my Spleen because that's what you see on social media. <laughs> And that was really, that okay. was, <laughs> and that so was, people just, I like spleen. it's caught on, you know? He's my spleen. Yeah. All right, I like spleen. And I'm gonna tell you, Mickey, when I get somebody, I'm gonna call him my hashtag corn rubber. <laughs> Rub these corn. <laughs> hashtag wig detangler. That's, yes, that's what hashtag me. <laughs> yes. I like Mickey Guyton. I do too. I mean, the fact, I mean, I, I stand up for her, man. I mean, I, I stand up to applaud. I mean, uh, breaking into country music as a, as a black woman, mm -hmm. solo artist, it's amazing. I, 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 and she's so darn talented. Has so nothing good. to, it, just pure talent right there. Do you have a nickname? Do you and um, uh, Jordan have a, I forgot her, Who's I that forgot guy Jordan's you're name to? for a second. Um, Do you and Jordan have a nickname for each other? I don't, I mean, not really. I think I call him J-Man sometimes when I'm talking about, to other people. But like, J-Man's gone for the weekend. Oh, okay, that's cute. You no, know, I mean, but he's not, we're not like nickname people. It's babe, hun. Oh, yeah. You know. And then if you do call each other by your name, it's yeah. weird. Because when, if I call Colin, Colin, he freaks yeah. out. He goes, you just call him Call. He goes, I call him Call, or we have, I can't say it on TV. We have really, we have, no, 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 it's not, no. We, audience, you naughty five. No, we just have nicknames that they're they're goofy and they're they're like Tell me more. bad. No, they're we Shoot make they're, no they're they're like they're gross to uh, like we make fun of each other, like like sweaty. No, I can't even say it. I'll get, no, I, I like my job, but no, okay. but we do. Well, oh, you know, we talk in a little voice of oh, come over here, droopy. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. Come here, pookie bear. We do. We. I'm not. I mean, why would I make this up? It's not. Yeah. Oh, come here, droopy. Yeah, it's just, anyway, <laughs> let me move on. Love. Next in the dish. Thank you, audience. Such a beautiful thing. 
The producers are loving this. Like, could Jason be tired more often? Yeah. <laughs> Melissa Peterman, our good buddy. Hi, Melissa. Uh, she's set to appear in a Hallmark Christmas movie this holiday season that Ted will be reviewing eventually. Uh, the movie is called uh, Hell Hall Out the Holly. <laughs> You're doing great. I, got, I just said Hell Out the Holly. Uh -huh. Hall Out the Holly. And her co-star is Christmas movie Hall of Fame, Lacey Chabert. Well, Missy posted a video on Facebook over the weekend with the legend herself. Look, let's look at this. Please tell everyone that what that film's title is. Uh, I don't know. Mean Girls? That's the one. <laughs> uh, your character, Gretchen Wiener, was a... <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Gary, you didn't do your research. It's Wieners. Okay. Is Chabert a Greek name? Yeah. No, it's French. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you say. Yep. Um, so when you're doing these movies, it's often 100 degrees outside, but yet we're pretending it's winter. How do you stay so cool? Um, we don't. We've fainted twice today already, and we've been sweating, and you know, we have lots of fans, and we try to get in the shade as much as possible. And we You don't need to brag about how many fans you have. <laughs> we get it. You're Lacey Chabert. You have a lot of fans. <sighs> <Okay>. <laughs> Oh, our buddy Melissa <laughs> and the queen of Christmas movies, Lacey Chabert. I love everyone's using those tiny microphones. Yes. I want one. I want Eric to go around and we want to call them tiny mic review interviews. Do we have one? And she does a tiny mic drop. Oh, I didn't know we have a little tiny microphone like that. Well, where the hell am I? I didn't. We I, have a muskrat. I missed that meeting. We have that. Did, have you seen our tiny mic? I don't know. Like we could hook it up to Oliver. Uh, yeah, iPhones and stuff. Well, okay. or Oliver. Yeah. Otter. Haul out the Holly <laughs> debuts on November 26th uh, as the second movie in a double feature. Ooh. Wow. Ted, Ted's gonna be busy that weekend. We should probably tell Mrs. Ted she won't be seeing him. Probably. Yeah. Next in the dish. And by the way, Ted's not married. Every time I say Mrs. Ted, people are, is he married yet? No. We are you kidding me? When Ted gets married, we're gonna do the show from his wedding. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, yeah. Backstage fast. <laughs> <laughs> Anything for ratings. <laughs> it's been an up and down week for Bachelor Nation. Speaking of Ted, Clayton and Susie broke up, but when one Bachelor relationship ends, another one can begin. It's like <laughs> birth and death. Uh, Pilot Pete, remember him? And Kelly are back together. Oh, thank goodness. That's right. Yeah, according to uh, Us Weekly, the couple rekindled their romance over the summer. Y'all will remember, maybe, Pete and Kelly became a couple after he ended things with Hannah, Hannah Ann, following the season 24 finale. Then they split in late 2020, but they remained buddies. And now they're back in the fantasy suite. Now they're back. And he's the one that has that mom that, like, you have to get the, uh, Deborah, I think her name is, that you have to get permission. She was all up Intense. in everybody's business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Remember he engaged to Hannah Ann and then he started to date Madison and then he went back to Kelly and then he broke up with Kelly and then I think he went up with somebody else and now they're back together again. And you make fun of my Knox Landing references. Did you just see how quickly you rattled that off about Bachelor Nation? It's so juicy. Yeah. I'm glad that you watch it because you anyway. <laughs> we have a great show ahead. Go get some more coffee. We'll be back right back. Back in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> We're done with the dish, but not the fun. Next. What's the most annoying thing about your kid? She can't hear you. <laughs> From pouting to eating with their mouth open, parents are telling Miss Shannon what drives them crazy about their kids. And it's like an as seen on TV product that actually works. My latest best thing ever is the answer to getting rid of those annoying smartphone smudges. That and more when we come back. great audience today. It's been a few weeks now since kids returned to school and for many of you parents it's a it's a relief to send them back to the class. So we sent Shannon Paul. Hi Miss Shannon. 
out to talk to parents about, about the reasons they're so gosh darn happy to see the kids get out of the house. It's our latest Shannon on the street. OK, so photographer Eric and I were being honest with each other. We are so excited that our kids are back in school <laughs> that we figured we wanted to share this joy with some other parents because no matter how much you love them, kids can be kind of annoying. So we're going to come out and let some people get it off their chest. What do you think is most annoying about kids? Question just real quick. It'll only take a second. Just a real quick question. Oh, gotcha. Otherwise, I would. Thank OK, you. thank you. Are your children annoying? <laughs> Maybe that's why she's late. What's the most annoying thing about your kids? Oh gosh. We're asking people, what's the most annoying thing about your kids? <laughs> Do you have annoying children? No, I don't. Oh. So, by any chance, are you a parent? Yes. Okay, well, here's what we're asking. Now that our kids are back in school, we just want people to be able to get some stuff off their chest. What's okay. the most annoying thing about kids? Nothing. She's so sweet. She's one. <laughs> Okay, so she has grown into annoying yet. No, she's not there yet. Okay, she all right. could, Yeah, she just started crawling. Good luck if she gets bigger. Got to think. Ooh, wait till she starts walking. Ooh, that one-year-old, I'm like, we're both looking at her like, you have no idea. They're like, I hope they walk. I hope they walk, because I'm tired of carrying you. And then they start walking, they're like, come back here. Stop walking away. Go where I tell you to. <laughs> okay, so two seconds. Okay, I'm going to hop in front of you. Okay. What we're asking, since the kids are back in school, we're asking what's the most annoying thing about your kids? Neither one of us have children. You want to talk dogs or cats? Uh, you can cats tell us. And yeah. dogs. Oh, okay. So your kids are so annoying, you chose not to have them and just have pets. Uh, you said that we didn't. Okay, fair enough. All right, that works. Thanks for watching. We love our grandkids, though. Okay, that makes sense. Wait a minute. How's that work? So they had them, they just have grown up and gotten out. Okay, I get it. All right, that's fine. I thought the, the pets had human babies. <laughs> If the pets had had human babies, that's a whole different show. We'd be on the Sci-Fi Network, not on Fox 9. That would work. Oh, what isn't the most annoying thing about kids? <laughs> All right, fair this, enough. This is why I, have, we choose, I choose to have a child like this. Okay. They don't talk back. Mm -hmm. We're just here for the good weather and a good walk, and nothing could be happier for him. But, you know, that, that if you had kids, at least, and that they had kids, then you've got, uh, you know, instant companions, right? So okay, so keeping they, them occupied they live longer they than dogs, so yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. If you ever write a parenting book, I want you to title it, They Live Longer Than Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Being a messy eater. Misbehaving. Getting up and getting them out the door. Screaming. Screaming? They yeah. were just loud all the time? Yep. They, they, they know it all these days. Right, right. <laughs> we got whoopings. They took the whoopings out. We got beatings. Yeah, yeah, beatings. Oh, uh, they're loud? I have some suggestions on some earplugs that might Help oh, you. yes, yes. Okay. No flight attendant and earplug are definitely a, a must in the plane oh, no. with all the kids. Oh, and, uh, you're a flight attendant? Yeah, oh, I am. that must. When you just see a kid get on the plane, do you just start shaking your head? I might, yeah, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. I'm sorry for all the parents, but I might. <laughs> all right, that makes sense. Yeah. Right. Thanks. Good luck with everybody Thank else's you. kids. Thank you. Is this your little girl? Uh huh. Okay. Can, Dad, can you take her over there a minute? Just two steps that way. Just take her that way. Cover her ears. What's the most annoying thing about your kid? She can't hear you. <laughs> she can't hear you. She's not looking. She's not looking. Crying? Stop crying. <laughs> Mom's sick of it. That's OK. But they're in their 20s now, so they're pretty cool again. If, if they were like in middle school or high school, I'd have a lot to say. So are you excited that they're out of the house now? <laughs> kind of. OK. <laughs> I miss them, but. It's nice. I don't know, they're a lot of fun later on. If we'd known the grandkids were so much fun, we would have treated their parents better. <laughs> then they come back around after about sophomore year in college. See, that's why I probably feel that way, is that mine's 14, so right now he's Oh just... yeah, good luck. I oh, know, it's the worst. <laughs> My kid's 14. Oh, okay. Yeah, you made that noise like, oh no, you're just stuck for a while. All the advice we have is just get them out of the house. How do your kids get less annoying? They move out, that's it. <laughs> See, that's what we need, Eric. We need to get them into college faster. That's what we need to do. How quickly can we get our kids into college? It could be why college costs so much. <laughs> Are you willing to pay $60,000 to get rid of your child? If yes. you ask me today, yes, I, yeah. yes, yes. They're teenagers. Here's all my help. money. Take it all. You may have this child. Thank you, Shannon. <laughs>
That flight attendant, I said it yesterday, I, I would love to just, you know, uh, uh, kind of put them into, dis into a disguise. I would love to interview flight attendants of what annoys them the most about us. You know, the people, the, the general public. Is it children? Dawn was telling me, my, my buddy Dawn from the radio show that I referenced earlier, she was on a flight from Ireland and this woman uh, had the flight attendant give her fresh coffee. And the woman said, it, it looked at her and said, it's not hot enough. And the flight attendant woman said, it was just brewed. It can't get any hotter. And then the, the woman uh, said, I would like some sugar. And the flight attendant handed the woman a packet of sugar and the, and the woman handed it back to the flight attendant and said, I want you to pour it into the cup. Can you imagine? I would, and Dawn said she had everything she could do not to say something. I'm like, that woman's glad I wasn't on that flight because I would have said something right there. And Colin would have been so embarrassed. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Back in a moment. You can't treat people like that. Poor flight attendant. Let's make it a good day. the BAM house. Go we'll give them a follow on social media. Okay, we all have more screens than ever that nowadays, from phones and tablets to TVs and computer screens and what have you. I just discovered something new to clean those screens, and I'm naming it my latest best thing ever. Our version of Oprah's favorite things. Okay, let me just tell you, I'm sitting, I never, I really never do this. Mm -hmm. I was sitting down and I was uh, scrolling TikTok or Instagram and I, credit where credit's due, I saw this from Jill Martin on the Today Show. Mm -hmm. They do a whole shopping thing now on the Today Show. Yeah. I don't usually listen to all of this, but there is a product called Woosh. Woosh. Here's a little picture. It's available on Amazon and at other stores. Here's what it looks like. Not only does it clean our phones and screens, but eyeglasses as well. And our friends here, our security guard friend, was telling me that it is one, it is the only kind of cloth and cleaner that even Apple endorses because it gets things so gosh darn clean. And I thought, really? Really? So I ordered it. Mm -hmm. Again, I, it was, I never do this. I saw it, I went to the link, and I bought it, and it was delivered to my house in like three hours. Really? Yeah, it was on available for Amazon oh, Prime. Right. What, you have a question before I? No, I was just remarking about how you never order anything online. No, 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 no. I just mean <laughs> stuff that I see, you know, you see recommendations from like TikTok or something. Yeah. Now, my mom does all the time with, with good success. Anyway, so the little kit uh -huh. comes in a box. Now, you get the, the full bottle. Now, ignore, I accidentally spilled it when it came in. The, the lid popped off aggressively and I spilled. But anyway, so you get a nice, this is uh, 3.5 ounces. And then, uh, this is what I love. They give you the little travel too. Oh, nice for to like keep, your bag. Yeah, to keep in your bag and three whoosh cloths. Whoosh. Three. Um, and I, so I, I thought it was just good for iPhones. I clean my glasses, uh -huh. you know, because it gets you get your makeup yeah. on it and you mm -hmm. get the sweat and all that. Yeah. It is the best thing I've ever used for cleaning my glasses. Now let me. I feel like I'm, what was that guy that did the, the Chopo Matter or the Chopo Matic? I feel like we're doing an infomercial, but Aaron, let me see your phone and then okay. I'm going to do Aaron's because your phone, okay, I've seen your phone dirtier, but this <laughs> is, um, yeah, let's do this. Okay. May I whoosh your phone? I suppose you can <laughs> whoosh my phone. There we go. Oh, the name. I just threw that down. Oh, okay, anyway. Okay. No, don't no, worry about it. We'll get it. Again. We'll get it after the show. Anyway. Okay, now I'm whooshing. Uh -huh. I'm right there. I'm whooshing. I don't know if you should. Uh, whoosh. There we go. Kendall, look at that. Oh, I've been whooshed. All, no, no, don't be sassy. No, Tell I'm the people. It does actually look really good. Does it? Okay, Erin, yeah, come here. Clear. Now, Erin has, and she doesn't mind me saying this, disgusting. her film, her phone is disgusting. Oh, <laughs> no, stay right here, Erin. Stay right here, right here. Leo, let's, can we get, there we go. There's Erin. Okay, Erin, wave to the good people of America. Right there, okay. <laughs> oh, my God, Erin, your phone is disgusting. Okay, you. yeah. Okay, let's, may I don't whoosh? Take, don't take the thing off of it. It's even worse. I won't. May I whoosh your phone? Please whoosh me. Okay. Uh -huh. I've waited forever. <laughs> 
Aaron, you're going to be waiting a little while longer for I've that. I've never been whooshed. Thanks yeah. for being my first one. I have once in 91 in uh, Indianapolis. Yeah. Didn't end well. Oh, my goodness. Look at it. Tell the people. You, uh, you can't see, like but that? it's. But all kidding aside. It's really good. It's really it's good. good. Now I can see all the scratches. I, I was just going to say, the one thing. I got to find the best thing ever, a new scratch proof. Yeah. But isn't that nice? Yeah, you know what you should say when you get it done? What? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Aaron Schwab, everyone. <laughs> Woo! But I'm not kidding. I think it was like 20 bucks or so okay. for the kit. And it looks like it'll last a while because yeah. you use a little spray. And, and y this is how you know you're in your uh, 40s. Yeah. You get excited about crap like this. Whoosh. You know what I mean? You yeah. get excited about glass cleaner. Whoosh. But I was very excited. To sh this is why I love having a show. I'm telling you. Uh, I love this. It's my latest best thing ever, the Whoosh screen cleaner. <laughs> this is why we don't win Emmys. We just spent five minutes on a glass cleaner. Whoosh. Anyway. Hey, but people, you know what? We're going to get more emails about this than anything we've done this week. I bet you. We're going to take a break. Whoosh! Right after this. We'll be back. Stay with us. I should probably clean mine. Thank you. Welcome back. The audience. I'm here to report. I'm here to report that Aaron showed the audience. Let's see. The whooshing, and they were very impressed by Aaron's phone. I'm by not the whoosh. Yeah, very, yeah. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. When it comes to movies that defined a generation, not many did it better than writer director John Hughes. Absolutely, <gasps> yes. Right, yeah, defined our my generation. Aaron's executive producer Jeff's. Uh, he created iconic movies like 16 Candles, The Breakfast Club, and of course, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Home Alone. Uh, but there's one John Hughes movie that doesn't always get the attention that the others get. It's time once again for a Jason Show Pop Culture History Lesson. So it, uh, the year was 1985 and John Hughes was uh, coming off the success of 16 Candles and Breakfast Club when he released his next teen movie about a pair of nerds who literally build a beautiful woman with the help of a computer and a well-placed doll. Here's a look at Weird Science. Something's about to change their world. Something out of this world. She's alive, alive! What would you little maniacs like to do first? It's all in the name of science. Weird Science. If you want to be a party animal, you have to learn to live in the jungle. Not us. Not here. No way. <laughs> yes way, yes. That is a clip from the original trailer. Well, uh, during my trip back to Indianapolis to reunite with my high school friends, I rewatched the movie with my bestie Ange, who, and this is not a joke, Ange uh, has a, a, a little girl eight years old who loves weird signs. And we were irritating the eight-year-old because Ange and I were quoting the entire movie throughout. Yeah. Well, Weird Science starred Kelly LeBrock, Anthony Michael Hall, and an unknown, Elon Mitchell Smith. And it takes place, uh, Elon's in the middle, and of course, there's Anthony Michael. It takes place over a weekend as weird things start to happen when Lisa arrives. One of my favorite scenes, and I know you love it too if you're our age. One of my favorite scenes in... <laughs> <laughs> involves Lisa meeting, oh, and there's the grandparents, uh, <laughs> involves Lisa meeting Anthony Michael Hall's parents for the very first time. Look at this. Do you go to Gary's school? Do I look like I'm in high school? <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> oh, God! Do I look like I'm in high school? Don't threaten me, Al. You're out of shape. I'll kick your all. Yeah, anyway. So, uh, so in this reunion, in this reunion this week, uh, that weekend in Indianapolis, my friend Ange told me that she went to a Comic-Con type thing where they met Anthony Michael Hall and Elon Mitchell Smith. Oh, cool. And they did this fabulous Q&A back and forth and revealed all sorts of little tidbits, thus the history lesson. There's a famous scene, you know, back in the 80s, 
if you were a teenager, you hung out in the mall. Everyone did. I mean, that's what you did on Saturdays. There's a scene in, 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 uh, in Weird Science that takes place in a mall. Well, they reveal, here it is right here, this Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man in the middle. Well, they reveal that this mall was actually the mall that one of the girlfriends hung out in. And this scene you're getting ready to see, see right here where they dumped the icy on Anthony, Michael, and Elon. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. said this was the most fun scene for them to film. They did it several times and absolutely <laughs> loved it. And uh, Anthony Michael Hall called called uh, Robert Downey Jr. during the Q&A. There's a sale at Towel World, Towel World. Uh, and uh, talked about how uh, Robert Downey Jr. was very naughty during the shooting of this movie. Did horrible pranks on some of the female co-stars that I won't mention here. Oh. Uh, but yeah, different time. Now let's move over to Bill Paxton, who played Chet, the older brother. There's Chet right there. You're stewed, but wad. Anyway, <laughs> they uh, in this panel, and, and I had heard this over the years. I interviewed Bill uh, twice in, in my career, and Bill was very nice to me. But uh, the panel backed up what everyone always said about the late. It's very weird to say late, but that he was just the nicest guy. And a few of the lines that Chet said uh, was actually ad-libbed by Bill Paxton. And it, it, he just became one of your favorite characters because he was such the stereotypical mean big brother. And but now when you look, I will say, looking back at Weird Science, mm -hmm. I don't know if the movie could be made exactly how it was back then because you think it's very because Kelly LeBrock is like 28 and Elon Mitchell Smith was like 15 or 16. And yeah, but they're, there they're romance? They were 60 odd. Well, oh. they built Lisa to be a girlfriend. I mean, that was, yeah. So yeah. it was naughty teenage boys building a girlfriend. But <laughs> uh, so there's a couple things that, like a lot of John Hughes movies, doesn't age quite well. Uh, but overall, it just, I know I made a lot of you smile if you're in my generation. It brings you back to those John Hughes days. And it, it most 90% of it holds up. It's mm -hmm. quite delightful. You can look for Weird Science on cable or rent it on Apple TV, Amazon, or Google Play. There we go. Your Jason Show <laughs> Pop Culture History lesson. You would like it. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I'll have you over. We'll do a little watch like party. The slushy scene. The slushy <laughs> scene. Yeah, we'll be right back. Back in a moment, everyone. <laughs> do you go to Gary's school? Kendall just had to sit through me, Jeff, and half the crew reciting uh, weird science quotes. I'm yeah, sorry. No yeah. idea what just happened. For God's sake, would you cover yourself? <laughs> it's time for the world's shortest segment, everyone. Here we go. This just makes me happy. Happy anniversary to one of the longest running shows on TV. 68 years ago today, The Tonight Show made its debut on NBC. A little fun facts. Uh, Steve Allen was the very first host. Five more hosts have led the show since then, with Jimmy Fallon in the main chair since 2014. My idol, Johnny Carson, hosted the longest from 1962 to 1992, or 30, 30 years. The show was created by Pat Weaver, father of Sigourney Weaver. He also created The Tonight Show. We're, the Today Show, that's right. We're going to take a break. We'll be tonight, today, midday. We'll be right back. 1991, I should say. Welcome back. <laughs> it's time for the surprise goodbye. You know how this works. Uh, I don't know what's in this until I read it right now. Today, what could be the creepiest movie promo campaign ever. If you watched baseball the past few days, what is this? If you watch baseball the past few days, you may have seen creepy people among the crowds with a weird smile on their face. Turns out it's a movie campaign. Paramount paid people to go make the weird smile in public places, all to create a viral campaign for the new horror movie Smile. Oh, like the okay, guy let in me the blue see it. Right Do we there? see it again? The guy in the blue. The guy, the guy in the blue? blue? Yeah. Oh! And then there's another one. The lady oh, right in the green was the freakiest. This lady. That lady. Oh. So creepy. No. That's a, I've seen a little bit of that trailer, and it's horrifying. 
Uh-huh. I don't like the weirdly. That's just no. No, 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 no. I don't play that. No, uh -uh. no. Tomorrow, we'll be joined by comedian Paul Mercurio. He'll be in town this weekend at the House of Comedy. But that's going to do it for us right now. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks to our studio audience. And we'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Have a good day. Come on, Kendall. Let's smile.